When the Banu Merchantman was first concepted, I saw a ship that looked rugged, something that had been fixed time and time again, and in the law we had the Banu passing it down to their families again and again and again. This isn't quite the Banu Merchantman of today. What we see today is something that has been adapted for human use, and as we've seen recently, they've applied the beautiful design language of the Defender to the Banu Merchantman, which has turned it into something that I think we can all agree is beautiful in such an aesthetic way. I would say it's a great departure from what was originally shown. From the golden filigree, to the peacock eye thrusters, to natural druidic-like internal structures that stem from the base all the way to the cockpit which we get most likely as the Banu probably grew this ship to what it was, quite literally. And this is a ship I've wanted to talk about, because of how great I believe it will be when it gets released. And of course, when we do eventually get the gameplay loops involved with it. The Banu Merchantman, as it stands now, is about the size of the 890 Jump. While it does not have any capital components in the ship matrix, I believe that this will change, and this is something of a blessing and a curse. Because from what we've been told by CIG, anything large and below component-wise is something that we will be able to change ourselves. Capital components are something bespoke, and one will have to take it into a yard to get fixed. On the other hand, capital size components outclass large components in capacity, so it's going to be interesting to see once those gameplay aspects come in, when we inevitably have to repair the Banu Merchantman, what we are going to have to do when things go wrong. When we look at the internals of the ship, we see a large cargo hold about half the size of the whole sea, as well as an area for trade a gameplay loop that should be quite different to hauling, and also some VIP rooms. I expect that the VIP rooms would be something linked to the culture of the Banu, because the Banu are very specialised in their jobs and what they do. It's their entire life. Just look at the Defender in its two seats, one for the pilot and another for the gunner. Now if a Banu is trained in trade and comes aboard your ship, to pick some purchases to be made and give a location to deliver it to, they are likely to want to stay aboard the ship and make sure that what they purchased at the market is delivered to the right place. In law, these areas are there because the Banu can spend months negotiating. And while the Banu may want to do these things, I think humans are more likely to want to go from one place to another and just enjoy the beautiful internal Banu architecture within the ship. But I doubt travelling on one would be quite like anything that an Origin ship could give you. Origin ships tend to have a lot of space for different activities while they travel, which likely allows for a degree of luxury and comfort that the Banu merchantmen will not. And while the Banu do want people to be comfortable with them, they also like to display their wealth, and that's integral to the way the public areas have been designed, which has a lot more gold, jewels, rare stones, and other such frivolities, which will show everyone what amazing traders they are, right? A lot of people speculate that the Banu Merchantment will come to around the same price as the 890 Jump, and I believe that to be true on multiple points. In fact, in-game, perhaps it'll cost even more. Consider when we get to the Quanta economy, and everything will be based not only on function, an arbitrary amount of design time within the law itself, which I believe 
is probably going to explain the price of the Glaive and Scythe reproductions. Because they do cost a hell of a lot. And then also, the manufacturing costs and material costs. Just consider the material costs of the Banu Merchantman. Floating crystals, admitting light. Held there by Xeon technology. Chairs seemingly made of jade-like rocks. And gold inlay everywhere. This thing is going to be expensive. I'm not sure if they'll bring the pledge price beyond the 890 jump, because above $1,000, there are anti-money laundering laws that make things a bit more complicated. Hence why you can't gift something that you spent over $1,000 on. But I think it'll be close. The Banu Merchantman as a ship is about making money. It's in the name, right? And I see three gameplay loops where this could be a possibility. And when we look at maximising the amount of money that can be made, we have to take all three into account. First of all, there are the hauling jobs. Agreeing to take bulk goods from one place to another. And then there's trade. Where I think we'll be taking more expensive goods and trying to sell them at a high premium. Things like components, or high tier and rare resources. Lastly, there are the VIP rooms, which I've spoken of before, and I'm certain that we'll be able to tax the NPCs at a premium from one place to another. So first we think about where our more precious cargo might be traded and sold for a nice profit. I think this is much like the Mercury Star Runner, where you might take a mission to run information and also see what you can bring in its large cargo hold along the way. But instead of two gameplay loops, you're looking at three. So it may take a little more planning than the Mercury Star Runner. While it may be more complicated overall, due to the market, you will be able to trade wherever you like as long as there's a settlement. Being able to charge higher premiums in more dangerous places like in Pyro. Speaking of more dangerous places, I think it's time to talk about those armaments. Everyone seems to focus on the size 8 guns at the front, which are likely to be pilot controlled, which is really fun, right? The ability to shoot anything that's trying to block your way. Then there's the top turret, and a couple of remote turrets. But what interests me the most about the Manu Merchantman? in terms of armament, is the point defence. Something I see so few people talking about. Point defences are likely to be automatic guns that are going to be able to shoot things like fighters and missiles and torpedoes with different levels of success. And due to the array of these that it has, that seem to cover a wide area of the ship, that and the rest of the package seems to make the Banu Merchantman a very strong ship, with a lot of technology at its hands. Additionally, updated since the concept, was to give it a hangar to fit a defender in. Recently in Spectrum this has been conferred to be a bespoke hangar, and was also confirmed to fit anything inside that sits. Where something like a Hornet will probably fit, but a Super Hornet might not. It's going to be a lot of fun to find out, and I expect a few explosions on the way. There are a lot of additional things about the Manu Merchantman that a player can also enjoy. It's likely seeped in Banu culture and ways of thinking. The Banu are very prideful and like to show off their hard work. And as you can see with the concept picture of the armour storage, which is near the bridge, it's like they're even showing it off to the rest of the crew. There's also a shrine which could be to either of the gods that we know about, or others. Maybe we'll be able to visit a Banu settlement and get some things to customise it. When we get a bit more persistence, I hope that that's something we see, but I don't think it's high on CIG's priorities right now. The two gods we know about are Kassa, the patron of luck, 
and Turnin, the great traveller. I'd love to hear what you think other gods might be that they have. Another thing that's going to be very important in the future for the game is the reputation system. We'll find certain ships are locked behind that until we're in good stead with the manufacturers themselves. In this case, it would be the Banu Soli that deal in selling ships. Not necessarily the ship manufacturer Soli, of which there are probably a few. And this is probably going to make the Banu merchantmen on the harder end to get. Having to do jobs for the Banu until they like you enough to want to sell you the ship. But an interesting aspect of the reputation system is that there may be influences on it based on the components, the ships, the clothes that you wear when interacting with characters. They've said that this is a possibility, and we know that being clean is going to help when interacting with characters, hence having showers and toilets and such. And aren't we all looking forward to the pooping system? Gotta feel sorry for those doing the mocap for it. And even if the Banu Merchman doesn't help you get that Banu rep on its own, to get the Defender to go along with it, I think that the different jobs that it would be able to take are the kinds that the Banu are likely to give you, which should help you get the Defender or whatever Banu ship they come out with that we haven't seen yet, like the Trip Taker. And as I've said, aesthetically and subjectively, the Banu creates some of the most beautiful ships I've seen, so I definitely want to be in a position to collect as many as I can because they're just so beautiful and interesting to me. If having to get the rep to buy certain ships like this seems bothersome, maybe consider that because of the gameplay loops that it'll allow you to do are seeming bothersome, it might not be the ship for you. Just something to think about. And something that I think will be quite interesting for those with the Kraken Privateer or have one in their org is this security section. Seemingly with lots of screens, guards, and such. Definitely expect to see something like this on the Privateer. Now speaking of the Kraken, something I'd like to do is compare the C2 Hercules, the Merchantman, and the base Kraken is that's actually the one that's more geared towards hauling stuff. All these ships can land. All these ships are going to be very good at hauling, with the Hercules being focused on being able to haul and being very good at hauling vehicles, and the Kraken being more of a mobile base. With these ships... I would say the C2, you would need a crew of two, the Banu Merchantman, four, and the Kraken, six to ten. Here are the cargo numbers for the ships. Now, when you're making a cut between people, let's say we split it evenly, this is what we have. The Banu Merchantman does very well for itself in this area with the Kraken not far behind, unless crewed with 10 people, at which point it's still going to be more profitable than the C2, not including fuel costs and repair. Now let's move on to the defence of these ships. I've taken rapid repeaters of multiple sizes and extrapolated from there, being conservative on how much extra power higher sizes that we don't have yet get which is kind to the Hercules in this comparison. But what's probably more important is the DPS per person, because we can always bring along another ship. The per person comparison becomes more important, although we must remember that the larger ships are going to be better protected with bigger shields and more armour and more hit point pools. Now there are a few interesting observations I would like to make here. The first being the Banu Merchantman with its point defence, and the Kraken with six people have very similar DPS, which when the Kraken has 50% more crew is very impressive. So per person, 
the Banu Merchantman is getting an increase of 25% DPS over the Kraken. Now one thing to take into account with point defence is that we don't exactly know how they're going to work. And given that they're automatic and spread out across the ship, they're unlikely to be focusing on the same target. Hence why I want to show you the numbers with and without point defence. Now, the Kraken, with its remote turrets, total DPS is about two Banu Merchantmen's, which is a lot. Just as a defensible platform, it's going to be really formidable. The Banu seem to use a lot of holographic stuff in their advertising. We've got the jellyfish in the marketplace, which could be any item, but they wanted to put a jellyfish in the marketplace, and who doesn't like a jellyfish? But they've even considered when you walk up the steps on the outside, that as you walk up, different advertisement holograms will pop up in front of you to get you excited and interested in the things inside. And I think it's funny that the banner are so in your face about it. It's like the old pop-ups you used to get on the internet. An almost invasive level of advertising. But I expect the banner to be quite oblivious to that, given that they're so focused in on doing one thing and doing it well. Aliens getting small things wrong because of cultural misunderstandings are something I hope CIG really gets in there because things like that are kind of cute, as long as it's not too annoying on a day-to-day -day basis. And last but not least, of course, we have the claw. The front landing mechanism, which just looks awesome. I don't have much more to say about it, but I wanted to show you. As this is the first video I've done, I'd like to explain a few things about what I'm hoping to do here. I'm here to speculate on upcoming ships, take a few guesses as to what the gameplay may look like, and give grounded analysis using my critical thinking skills as to what I think realistically is going to come of things. This doesn't mean I'm going to be correct, and I'd love to hear more of anyone's thoughts about what I may have gotten wrong, or other views on how things may end up. If I go completely in the wrong direction on a ship, I may even end up doing a what I got wrong video. Last but not least, I'm setting up a Patreon. If you like what I do and want to support me as an artist, and if I add a little bit of enjoyment to your life, your support can help me keep the lights on and eventually save up for a new computer that isn't dying. That's the hope anyway. Eventually, I'd really love to stream Star Citizen 2. Now for the credits. I've been Puppet Master, and this has been The First Frontiers. Thank you. I'm never going to gate any of my work behind a paywall, but if this episode's given something to your value and you would like to support me, then you can support me on Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash puppet frontiers.